Hi, we're here from uh, AIM World, Enterprise Search and Discovery 2023 in Washington, D.C., um, reporting on all the latest in um, the AI craze that is uh, engulfed uh, search and knowledge management. Uh, with me is uh, Colin Harmon, uh, Head of Technology for uh, Nash, one of the players in this space, uh, who just held a very nice uh, talk in the Enterprise uh, Search um, conference uh, talking about hallucinations, retrieval of meta generation, and some of the issues um, that arise with that. But before we dive into that, uh, can you tell me a little bit more about what you guys do at Nice? Yeah, so we provide generally search and AI related workflows to industrial enterprises. And the company's been around for about five years, and I've been leading the, uh, the technology area there. And so uh, I guess uh, large language models and, uh, and GPT has really uh, uh, transformed the way that you guys uh, work as well? Absolutely, yeah. Um, every customer is asking for it, of course, but it's also simply increased the amount of capabilities that we can provide. Absolutely. Yeah. I've been in uh, AI and natural processing for like 30 years. This is the moment we've been waiting for, yeah, more or less, right? exactly. Um, so uh, you talked about this new uh, emerged pattern of retrieval of many generation, which is like the way to connect uh, GPT to uh, company internal information, mm -hmm. uh, proprietary information, domain-specific information, recent information, uh, and your uh, talk kind of focused on the problematic side of that, right? Like, when does it go wrong? Could you uh, uh, give our audience a bit of a glimpse of what you were talking about? Yeah, absolutely. So like you said, these search-based applications are very common now with you know, what customers ask for and what you can, uh, what capabilities you can provide. There are other ways to use these AI models, of course, but if we focus on that natural language interface to unstructured data, which you traditionally would have been um, interacted with through a search engine, now you have this pattern where there's a search engine and then there's a language model interface between that and the user. And that provides some additional capabilities versus just the search engine, such as efficiencies of question answering and summarization, basically automation of reading right. to a certain degree. You don't have to down, go down the 10 exactly. ways and find the information. Exactly, but it does not automate much more on the retrieval side. And that it turns out is where most of the automation uh, time would be spent, right? If you took away the search engine, what do you have left? Well, it just reads things, that's not very helpful. So. It adds these efficiencies, but it also introduces new problems. And a lot of those problems are related to either how the model works and how your interactions between that and the search system are set up, and also what a chatbot or natural language style interface suggests that a user is able to do. You can ask anything. You right? can ask anything, sure. right. But people will ask. Anything. And they will ask anything, even though in many cases you have a search engine with something that summarizes information and that cannot do anything. Right. So there, we covered some, some areas of um, defects that are related to how the model works, such as if there's not enough context provided, things that people call hallucinations, which we categorized as faithful, unfaithful and incorrect defects. And then also different types of um, user expectations that can cause them to disagree with the output of a model or of a system, regardless of how well that system actually works. Right, so these are kind of uh, uh, defects arising from uh, mismatch between user expectations and actual system capabilities. Uh, to what extent would you say um, uh, has nothing changed? Are we actually still like in the old days of information retrieval, evaluating search quality, and if you can get the right documents, into the top of the uh, uh, reg um, uh, prompt, uh, you're, you're fine. That's a big part of it. I'd say some of the areas that differ from that, though, would be what ChatGPT has trained people to think about. Right. Right, because ChatGPT has open domain knowledge about all, all open domain data in the world, essentially. Most people's enterprise search systems that back up these RAG systems are not going to have open domain knowledge. Right. right. So they have they're limited to a certain set of documents or, or knowledge sources. 
And also ChatGPT has trained people to think that it can perform workflows that it cannot, such as making a ranked list of entities, let's say, which is can be done involving search, but requires more than just search to actually perform that workflow. Right. So um, ChatGPT has kind of brainwashed people into asking for things that can't be simply provided using, you know, normal RAG concepts. You have to keep going into more advanced stages to right. address so this, those. This conversational uh, sort of metaphor uh, really opens up a, a whole new freedom of uh, uh, user interaction, basically, but it also creates mismatched uh, expectations. When you, um, uh, when you fast forward, like it's very hard these days, six to 12 months, uh, where do you see this model heading? What, like, what 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 are the most promising directions that, that you see in um, uh, AI centric search? Yeah, I think a couple things will happen. One is these systems in the eyes of users will become better understood and also bifurcate in a couple of directions. One being this is a basic passage based question answering system. I know what its capabilities are and I know that I can't ask it to make me a recipe for a dish that it's never seen before, right? Right. So on one hand, you'll have that and hopefully users begin to understand that's what it's capable of. The provider will tell you that this is the kind of system it is, yeah. so you know what's allowed. And then on the other side, we have more advanced systems being built with more agentic capabilities where they will be able to fulfill more open domain problems, more complex workflows, by pulling in information from vastly different knowledge sources, using spot tools to solve particular problems along the problem solving workflow and coming up with that entire process dynamically. Now, reliability is an issue with all of that, of course, but those are kind of the two areas um, that we'll probably move toward. Right, so um, just that last part, like um, uh, LLM agents and, uh, and uh, agents using tools and then performing tasks over a longer period of time, certainly been the hype in the last few months, yeah. right? With uh, uh, auto GPT and uh, baby AGI and all these things. Have you seen there really uh, any sort of uh, uh, convincing examples that this is sort of ready for enterprise applications? Yeah, not at the scale of auto GPT and those types of do anything ever in the world solutions, right? Um, I think of agents kind of like, like autonomous cars, right? Autonomous cars have been under development for how many years? 20 years, more than it's that. It's always next year. It's always <laughs> next year, right? And the technology is so good, but it just fails at the edge cases. And it's kind of a long tail situation of edge cases no. for both autonomous cars and all the situations that a, an AI agent could encounter in the wild. So what has proven successful is focusing on smaller pieces of the entire environment, right? So similar to with how instead of autonomous cars, you might have a system that keeps you in your lane, right? right? That's one piece of autonomous cars of an agent system. And if you restrict what the agent's allowed to uh, interact with and the workflows that it's requested to perform, then you can still find success just focusing on a smaller number of data sources, a smaller number of work. Basically like uh, enterprise search across the silos that um, uh, people have in companies, just uh, solving the really hard integration problems that people have been struggling with. Exactly, add another data source in, see how it does. Add a tool in, yeah. see how it does. Add some dynamic planning in. It doesn't have to happen all at once. We can get there slowly. And that's the only way we will get there. Very cool. So uh, thanks, Colin, for the Thanks, interview. Jacob. Uh, looking forward to uh, see where we really are in 12 months. Yeah, me too.